In our next topic, we're going to be discussing some of the advanced features in CAE, specifically 612. Uh, in this case, we're going to discuss the hybrid modeling capabilities, uh, specifically that is creating geometry from, from mesh faces. And I'm going to go ahead and put this into context. But what we're going to be working with is a track model. We'll, we'll be working with this track model for more than just this particular example, but this happens to be the P1 of them that, that uh, I think is quite appropriate. So this track model, you can go ahead and see this here. So what we have here is just the same track model. One we're using viscous pressure, one we're not. Uh, and so you can see that you can get pretty significant changes in results. Uh, that is not the topic of this discussion, but certainly does uh, is appropriate and does have import into abacus modeling. This is done in explicit. What we're going to do is just create and, and modify some geometry on the cogs. All right. So that puts it into context. Now what we're going to do is go ahead and open this database. All right. Now, you can see the track model. What I'm going to do here is go to the parts, and specifically, in this case, the, the drive unit or the drive cog cells. These are the, this is one base unit of, uh, of the cog cell. In this case, you know, each one of these units ultimately interfaces with the, the drive unit to then impart torque into the, into the belt assembly. So we're going to go back here. Now, I have a mesh on it, which, you know, is a native mesh, pretty straightforward, I mean, nothing fancy. But what we're going to do is, is uh, orphan this mesh to show you some of the capabilities with regard to creating geometry on faces. So now I'm going to go to the mesh, and then, so now I'm in a situation where I'm working with an orphan mesh, which you might be working with an orphan mesh. I'm going to create, then, geometry on top of this. So I'm going to go to the part level on this, and... I'm going to do two things. One is create geometry uh, from faces, and the other thing is I'm just going to flat out create new extrusion geometry as well. Uh, so the first thing I'm going to do is create an extrusion, and I'll, I'll just jump on one of these faces, it's fine, and then use one of the element sides to then go ahead and do it. Actually what I'm going to do is we're going to get a little bit, a little bit more creative, and the first thing I'm going to do is Come back to mesh, and then I'm going to edit, and I'm going to delete some elements. So I'm going to come over here, the element, delete. I'm going to select then these top elements. Okay, so now in this case, I want to then adjust the geometry that I put on there. I want to create a different top section. Now, so now I'm going to go to the part level. I'm going to extrude. I'm just grab one of these faces and then aside. So now I'm going to come in and what I'm going to do, I want to be able to grab these corners precisely. So I'm going to project the nodes to the sketch plane. And now I have a corner that I can go ahead and grab on each side of the, of the rectangle. I'm going to extrude up. Two is fine. I'm going to include a draft, which is a pretty severe draft. It's about 10 degrees and 2 millimeters upward. Okay. All right, so I don't like the depth of that extrusion. That's a little extreme. And we're going to go ahead and create one at about 1.2. Okay, that's not bad. All right, and then the next thing we're going to do is apply a radius to this as well. And I'll go ahead and grab all four of those faces. And we'll put a radius on there. And then I'm going to go to mesh. And it certainly detects already that there's that, that it is hex meshable, the new feature. So I've created geometry sitting on top of elements. New feature, very powerful tool for sure. All right, so what we're going to do is generate a mesh. And I'll show you that it's not continuous across the boundary. However, we need it continuous across the boundary unless we decide to create a tie constraint, which I really don't want to do. So we can use some of the, the, the tools that are available in orphan meshing, or in this case, uh, bottom up. But what we're going to do is associate the mesh with the geometry and use this tool right here. So I'm going to select geometry, and I don't want them to turn this filter on. I want to turn it off so that I make an ambiguous selection and select underneath. And then I'm going to select the faces. 
of the elements, and I'm going to select by angle. Okay, now when I mesh, I now have a continuous mesh across the boundary with hexes as well. Okay, so the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to create geometry from this mesh. So I'm going to come in and move back to part level, and then there's a tool that I can use, which is face from element faces. Now I can't select the whole face, unfortunately, in the whole component. I'm going to do it on this cog cell to the right. I do need to do it on a per, uh, on a per part or on a per face basis. So it doesn't solve everything, but it certainly does help. So what we're going to do is I'm going to grab, in this case, well, we'll change the filter angle to 20 is fine. I'm going to grab all these faces. And I'm going to set my rotation center there. It makes life a little bit easier. And we're just going to knit geometry. So now we're creating faces, geometric faces, on top. And now what we're going to do is delete. I'm going to go to Mesh, back to the Mesh module. And I'm going to delete then the elements that are underneath. Grab these and delete them. And then the last bit that we need to do is create a cell underneath. It did not put in that in this uh, watertight area here, the watertight bases, not a cell. So we just need to create that shell. So shape, solid, and shell. And I'm going to select that face. And now I'm going to go to mesh. And then I'm just going to select it and mesh it. And right away we see that it's certainly hex meshable. So in this case, uh, through some selection techniques, we've added faces, as you can see, from a mesh, and then created native geometry on top. Those are pretty significant changes. Now the next thing that I want to show you, and certainly powerful tools, the next thing that I want to show you is the ability to be able to drag nodes. Uh, that is something new as well. Okay, so what I'm going to do is edit the mesh, and I'm going to go here to Node Drag. It highlights the elements that are, are giving warning messages uh, that would give a warning within the solver. Okay, and I'm going to drag the node. Now, if I stay on a phase, it, it certainly will, will keep it on that face. I can project it to geometry. It tells me when I have an error or a warning element. If I do it on a boundary, it knows to honor the boundary. If I do it on a corner, it knows to honor the corner. And uh, just as it does up here as well. So this is a case where if you have a few nodes that you need to modify, this is a pretty powerful technique to be able to, to modify your mesh appropriately and, uh, and, and really fine tune it if you need to. It is available for both native meshes as well as as well as orphan meshes. You can drag them even on again. This is a native mesh, so that that pretty much covers the node dragging uh, and creating geometry. Okay, the next section actually is an extension of the earlier section, which is. Um, being able to apply geometry and creating geometry from element faces. So we're going to bring in a much more complicated model this time through the uh, STL import. This happens to be a femur. So this is scan geometry. It's ultimately been created uh, into and in, in, uh, morphed into an STL file. So we can read STL files directly. Uh, the femur in this case is, is very complex. Its geometry is very, uh, is very convoluted and, and certainly has a lot of curvature to it, quite a bit of curvature. What we're going to do is, is go ahead and, and use some of these features of creating geometry from, from element faces. Okay. So we're going to use then 
this tool. And we're not going to select elements, uh, element faces individually. That would be very, that would be way too much time and take way too long. We're going to select then by layer. There's numerous uh, types of techniques. Layer is certainly an interesting one. A layer is how many layers of elements are around your main element that you select. I, I'm going to select 10, which means when I click one element, it grabs 10 layers of elements around it. So you'll see that sometimes it will fail. Uh, that's certainly to be expected. This tool will not solve all of your problem inst problems instantaneously. But we're going to go ahead and grab this face again. So if I create selections that are small enough, so this will be a patchwork type of application. So if I select faces that are small enough, I can certainly manage in this case creating geometry across the whole boundary. And it is smart enough to detect that it is abutting previously created surfaces and it will remove those elements from there. So you would have to create a patchwork. Uh, the capability is there though to do this and then use virtual topology on top. This would be an extreme case of geometry. So again, I encourage you to use this tool to then go ahead and create uh, geometry from faces and element faces. That pretty much covers that. Oh, and also the selection, uh, I did want to mention the selection by layer. The other one which would be, uh, which would be very useful would be limiting angle. It's very similar to our angle, uh, angle selection tools, but that's the default by angle is, is measuring the angle relative to the adjacent element and it automatically updates on each adjacent element, whereas by limiting angle, it measures the element angle from the base element, the original element that you selected. So you can limit your the, the zone of, of your selection a little bit more, a little bit more creatively and, and cleverly um, with that particular technique. So I would encourage you to to use these different techniques as well, uh, by angle, limiting angle, and layer. Analytic would be uh, if it can detect that there's an analytical surface, whether that be a revolution or a sphere or a toroid or a cone, it will select by those if it can detect such geometry. So we've added a lot of capability there with regard to selecting. I think that covers it.